So picture it, your little band of adventurers are exploring a abandoned tomb, only to discover that the torches hanging on the walls are in fact hiding monsters. So what is today's video? Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing two projects. We're going to be making torches and wall sconces, as well as the terrifying juvenile mimic. So what is a juvenile mimic? Because I'm pretty sure everyone here is familiar with the concept of the mimic. Well, from the Dungeons and Dragons Adventurer magazine, there is a encounter that has a room that is just filled with these little baby mimics, these juvenile mimics that aren't chest shaped, but they are taking the form of everything else. So a torch on the wall, a chandelier, a pile of rusted armor, a statue of an elven goddess. So in this video, we're going to be making one of those kinds of mimics, and we're going to be using quite a broad array of materials for this project. This is part one of around three or four parts. So as you can see, material-wise we have matchsticks, we have cocktail sticks, we have various lengths of chain, little brass cogs like the kind you can get from Amazon. We've got cardboard or medium density chipboard like the kind you get at the back of a legal pad as spoken by everyone's favourite crafter. And we also have here a sprue of elf warriors from the Mantix Kings of War range, but we're not going to be using that today. Tools wise, we're keeping it nice and simple with this build with rulers, craft knife, pair of snips and a file, hot glue gun and some super glue. So let's, let's start this project off nice and easy. So when it comes to my miniatures and my terrain, I like to separate them out into two categories. Miniatures go on to round bases or square bases. So for basing terrain, especially small scenic pieces like chandeliers or torches in sconces, we're going to be using a two centimeter strip of cardboard and then we're going to mark out two centimeter squares all the way down before cutting with our craft knife. Now, you don't have to be too careful at this point. If you can, take your time, just score across. You know, the important thing is that you're measuring out two centimeters. These need to be uniform, but individually, they're not terribly strong. You're gonna to want to double these up. And in order to do that, we're going to just take a bit of super glue and sandwich it in between two pieces of cardboard. Nice and simple. Do take care when putting these together that you're not squeezing too hard and the super glue comes out and sticks you to it because it will but just by doubling them up we are strengthening them tremendously tremendously and ultimately if you build these right they will last you a lifetime so let's build the actual framework then for these torches because ultimately we can't just have these things hovering in midair we need something to ground them on and at least with a matchstick they're a bit more it's a bit more believable because it's a wooden post that they are fixed into rather than just a bit of paper clip and it's hovering in the air or something like that so very simply to make these joists we're going to take a full size matchstick and that's going to be the base and then we're going to cut little 45 degree supports to have on either side at the bottom. Now you could just jump right ahead and super glue these together but they are you know super glue is not terribly strong by itself and these are weak you know we are combining matchsticks and cardboard these are weak materials being weakly bonded you're going to need something to reinforce it and what bicarbonate of soda allows us to do is just instantly set that super glue and provide a little bit of dirt a little bit of texture a little bit of reinforcement to the build because not only does it look appropriate like they're actually sort of you know fixed together and, and have started to gather dust and dirt and grime from years of, of being in a cave or being underground. It's also adding that texture. Now, as you can see, this isn't an easy process. You know, I, you will try many times to get these things to stick in place, but with a bit of perseverance, you can do it. Now, when using bicarbonate of soda or baking powder to set super glue, I like to keep a large brush that is used only for this purpose of brushing off any excess okay because that powdery residue if you were to try and paint this straight off it's just going to ruin it it's just going to cause it to, to flake away so yeah use a big brush brush it off 
So to make the actual torch itself, we're going to be using, as I said at the start, a cocktail stick. And we're going to be using the sharp pointy end of the cocktail stick to be the, the handle, the base of the, the torch where the person would hold it. And we're going to cut around about a centimetre along to be the end. Now we're going to be using this rough cardboard that I've taken just from the back of the super glue packaging, right? It could be any cardboard. And we're going to cut that roughly into sort of a third or a quarter centimetre strip, like it's really thin. But the idea is what we're wrapping here is the suggestion of a oil soaked rag or cloth that would be the actual top, the burning part of the torch. So it doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, this is as far as miniature making goes, this is real tiny stuff that we're doing here at the end of the day. But honestly, this is what this is where, again, the patience comes into it because this is not an easy build. But if you do it, these techniques, you can carry this into your other miniature and scenery terrain making. So we've got our torch. We've got the little handle with the little light on top. So how are we going to attach this to the post? So I'm going to use this medium length chain and we're literally going to cut one link off. We're just going to open it up with a pair of pliers and then well, with a pair of snips and then using a pair of pliers, just pull that off the, the rest. And we're going to open this up enough that we can just sort of gently slot in the torch from, from the base and then angle and glue that onto the post. Again, this is incredibly fiddly work. Just take your time, deep breaths. You can do this. It's not that hard. But as you can see, by adding that extra points of contact, we can have it angled away from the post but we can also have it look like it's, you know, an adventurer could walk up to it and just lift it out, like it's not permanently fixed on. Now, again, to strengthen this, we're going to use some bicarbonate of soba and super glue, and we're going to just dust that in place. I know a lot of you guys like to use accelerant sprays, and that's perfectly fine if you're more comfortable with that. The advantage here is this is thicker, it's granular and it adds that extra dirt and texture that when it's painted up is going to look real good and help add to the, the character of this build. But as you can see, two points of contact, one being the, the metal chain, the ensconce, and the other point being the base of the torch. And once all is said and done, you can see just how quick and easy it is to make these. Like it's not it's not that hard. It's time consuming, but it's not that hard. So how are we going to make this mimic then? Well, as you can see, I've skipped ahead. I've done a lot of the basic steps and I've you know, used a circular 25 millimeter round base because this is a monster or a creature. This is not a piece of terrain. And I've even made the torch itself that we're going to be using as the body of the Mimic. So how are we going to make this work? Because if I just put that in the little metal holder, it's not going to look very monstrous. But then likewise, you know, this is quite a, a, t a small, fragile thing. So we'll worry about that later. Let's focus on the actual making this a monster for now. So first things first, let's cut a, a long tongue. Because when you look at a Mimic... They've got some key characteristics. They're covered in eyes, they're covered in teeth, and they always seem to have a real long sort of, you know, wrap you up and catch you, sort of latch onto your arm like tongue that's sort of long and bendy. So we're going to use a bit of that, that leftover cardboard again. We're going to cut it to a rough sort of, you know, one and a half centimetres in length. You're doing this all in proportions. So what, what looks right to you? And the nice thing about making monsters is... You know, there is no base line to kind of compare it to. You can make them as monstrous as you like. You know, so don't worry if the tongue's a bit too long or a bit big. So we're going to bend that into a nice curly shape. And then to strengthen that, just literally coat the piece of cardboard. Once it's glued onto the torch, coat that tongue in super glue. Oh yes, there's something I never thought I'd say waking up this morning. But by doing that, what you're doing is you are strengthening that cardboard because that is going to be hard and rigid now. The super glue will just soak into the particle of the cardboard and just completely set. But let's actually make this thing into a mimic because right now it doesn't it doesn't really look monstrous. It's just a torch with an extra little dangly bit. So we're going to use some green stuff, the two part modeling epoxy, and we're going to use this one metal tool, which has got a little prod, little pokey end. But to be honest, you could probably do this with a cocktail stick again. 
and we're going to first cover the front of the the mimic torch and we're going to be making a minnow like mouth right so if you've ever seen a minnow or a leech that kind of that ring of teeth because i like the idea that this is something that the adventurer goes up to goes oh fantastic a free torch reaches to take it out and maybe even touches it and then that's when the mimic sort of shows its true form wraps its tongue around the adventurer's arm and then starts to like try and eat through the hand and the wrist and and try and attack the adventurer right so a bit of green stuff over the front of the torch for the mouth or the top of the torch and then we're going to go round, make sure that that's firmly attached to the torch by pulling the green stuff down towards the the handle down towards the body and then on top we're going to be making that tooth like effect and we do this by literally just going around and making little triangles that all point inwards right they all point in. It's a lot like making a star shape, like an eight-pointed star, like a north, south, east, east, west, you know, the cardinal directions. Doing that, but making little triangles, so two angles pointed out. And before you know it, you'll have this effect where it looks like a little mouth. And you can stab a little hole in there and make it look like the actual mouth is open a bit. And you'll see that in the painted pictures at the end that you know, by doing that, it actually looks, it doesn't look quite static. We're going to use a bit of green stuff underneath to make the tongue like look like it's an actual extension of the creature. And then off screen, I've just gone in, I've added some eyes to help sort of make the illusion that this is a mimic. Because again, remember, mimics are teeth, eyes and tongue. And here you can see I've kept a model on the table throughout just to compare scale. And again, although this is bigger than a torch would be at this scale, it looks believable. It looks about right. So how are we going to attach this to the wall ensconce, you know, on the, the wooden post? Because if we try and just do the point by itself, it's just going to break. You know it's just going to snap off down the line. You drop this off the table, it's gone. It's done, right? Two points of contact, just like we were making the regular wall torch one point being the very back of the torch touching the post the other being on the metal holder itself and before you know it that's it now i'm not going to use the bicarbonate of soda trick here for the pure sake of i don't want this to look like the mimic is permanently attached to the post that's not the point this this mimic is coming away from you know it's it's crawled out of the river it's seen this torch in the in the ensconce and gone oh i could i could do that that'll trick adventurers maybe it's just found an empty one and filled that space or maybe it's taken it out and replaced it with itself in either case there you go there's your mimic of the day what can i say you don't get many videos like this on youtube everyone seems to do the very traditional treasure chest mimic or it's a bed or a door or a wall or something but what about the little mimics what about the coins what about the bags of gold what about the torches and the shields and the swords and the armor and the chandeliers and the chairs and everything's a mimic and i'm a mimic and that's the whole point you can have fun making these monsters so thank you all for watching boys and girls let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you've attempted yourself as I said, this is part one of a multi-part series, so check out the next video where we make mimic chandeliers. Oh yes, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.